Good morning and a warm welcome to everybody. We are so excited to have you with us this morning. And as you can see, the church is still empty, but our hearts are warm inside and we cannot wait to fill these seats again. Um, for now, we'll still be having our services online and you can join us in such a way. Thank you for tuning in. We are so excited about the word that's going to go out this morning and we, we are excited with what God wants to share with our hearts this morning. Let's just open in prayer. Father, we praise you. We thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you are yes today today forever the same thank you lord that you are always with us you will never leave us nor forsake us so i pray for each and everybody looking um, or, or watching this sermon this morning father god that they may experience the love of jesus that they may experience lord that you are near that you are nearer than a brother father god and that you hold us in the in the palms of your hands and that your grace is sufficient for us in jesus name we are now going to enjoy a time of worship. So wherever you are, worship with us. Give God the thanks and the praise of our hearts. And thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence.
Today we're going to be talking about the fact that God wants to prosper you in a storm. Jeremiah 20, 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Now this is probably the one verse that most Christians can quote. But few Christians know the background story to, to this prophecy in Jeremiah. Now, Jeremiah, he was known as the weeping prophet. He was known as the depressed prophet. He was known as the prophet that never, ever gave any good news. He was the one that uh, pronounced to the people that they would go into exile. And he was the one that prophesied that and tried to get the people to repent. So he didn't have a very fruitful ministry. He didn't have a ministry that had a lot of success and that he could look back on and say, listen, God used me to do this and that, and this is what I accomplished in my ministry. He couldn't say that at all. He only had the negativity. So to me, it's very ironic that the one verse that is remembered about Jeremiah is a positive verse. Um, and he didn't have a positive life, a positive ministry, or positive outcomes in his life. But the verse says, God wants to prosper us. Now, we're going to be talking about four things. Number one, it's God's heart to prosper you. God wants to prosper you despite insurmountable or difficult challenges. And then God wants to prosper you in a crisis because he is with you. Now, the first thought it is God's heart to prosper you. Just remember that if you are a parent, your heart is that your children will be successful, that they will grow up and be successful adults. Uh, one might decide to, to become a nurse or a racing driver or a doctor or whatever, but, it's, but it is your heart that they will be prosperous and successful in the careers that they choose. It's your heart that they will be prosperous and successful in the relationships that they have and so it's God's heart for you and for me as well but before we start talking about prospering and what it means and looking at a few bible verses I just have to tell you that from my point of view in my theological training we had a few professors and they were very negative about anything that smelled or looked like health wealth and prosperity teaching so I had a training and that the moment that you started talking or thinking or, or, or just surmising anything that had to do with prospering or success, people were immediately negative about it. 
I actually have a few pastor friends. And a few years ago, um, I quoted a few verses in the Bible that talked about prospering. And they got so upset about it that they unfriended me and they decided, no, listen, I don't want anything to do with this, with this, with this friend of mine. Uh, and they used to be at varsity with me. And then a few years ago, we did a, a little booklet in our cell group, The Five Wealth Secrets. And we uh, worked through that book and the scripture verses uh, concerning that. And there was actually a couple in, the, in, in that cell group that was so upset about this because they said, mm, no, listen, this, this smacks of health, wealth, and prosperity teaching, and we don't want anything to do with that. Um, the verses that you are reading, that's exactly the same verses that these guys are quoting. And they decided to leave the cell group. So I have a bit of a, a negative experience and upbringing when it comes to this whole thought or, 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 or promise of God prospering us. But then I went to the Bible, and that's our manual. And the Bible says, How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates a day and night. And he will be like a tree, firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he, yes, you've got it, he prospers. Now David talks in this psalm and he says, listen, it's God's heart, it's God's will. If you have a relationship with God, and, and if, if, if you have a, a living, dynamic, real relationship with him, it is his heart that you will be firmly planted by streams of water, that you will, ha that you will be fruitful in whatever you do, uh, that your leaves will not wither, that you will prosper in whatever you do. This is God's heart for us, for you, for me, for our lives. The second thought that I would like to share with you is, is that God wants to prosper you despite insurmountable, um, difficult challenges and circumstances. Now, when we look to the life uh, and look at the life of Joshua, we see that he had a mentor, and his mentor, his leader, his example that he followed was Moses. Moses had encounters with God where his face shone and his face lit up, and, 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 uh, and he had these amazing encounters and experiences with God. He did a few miracles. But Moses didn't have the ability to lead the Israelites into the promised land. And he was denied that, uh, that privilege and that responsibility. And now Joshua, where he's mentor, where, where this Moses, this amazing child of God, where he failed, he now had to do that. So he stood on the verge of, of the promised land. He had to lead the people into the promised land. And he was scared and he was afraid and he was thinking... Do I have what it takes? And as we go through life, I think the one question that, that we ask of ourselves and the one question that other people ask of us is, do I have what it takes? And then God came to him and he said to him the following in Joshua 1, No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. And perhaps, perhaps that sentence is most of, your, most of the people listening now. Perhaps that's your promise. That's your sermon for today. I will not fail you. I will not forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall give this people the possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give to them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not, turn from, uh, do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may have success, so that you may prosper in wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. And then you will make your way... There's that word again. Then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have success. Have I not com commanded you? Be strong, be courageous. Do not tremble or be not be, do not be dismayed. 
for the, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And now God came and, he, and, and, and Joshua had, had, had to take possession of the promised land. And it was daunting and he was afraid. And they had the giants that waited for them. And the, the people had these fortified cities. And our God said, I'm with you. I will help you. But I will also make you prosperous in that which you have to do. When we talk about prospering, I think the Bible gives us a, a few different perspectives. Um, when, when we talk about prospering and having wealth, it, it's firstly to have good health. Now, I know of a lot of people that, that they break every sales record. Uh, they have a scratch golf handicap, but they have poor relationships and they end up in the divorce court. That's not to have wealth and to prosper. To have wealth is also to have good relationships. I know of a lot of people, they have great loving relationships, but they can't pay their electricity bills at the end of the month. That's also not health and wealth and, pros uh, and prosperity. And then when the Bible talks about prospering, it's not only good health, it's not only good relationships, but it's also good finances. But I know of a lot of people, they live in these mansions, but they are too sick to enjoy it. And that's also not, uh, not to have wealth and prosperity. So when we're talking about health and prosperity, it's good health, good relationships, and good finances. Now God, that's the third thought, God can prosper you in a crisis because He is with you. So let's go and have a look at the life of Joseph. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought him from the Israelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. And he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. Now the first thing that we need to realize, and a lot of people, when there's uh, problems, when there's difficult circumstances, uh, when there's a lot of challenges, people tend to think, well, firstly, God has forgotten me, or if he, if he, or he, he might be cross with me, um, he might be punishing me because of what I've been doing. And that's most people's first thought. The moment things go wrong, we think, oh, God is cross with me, or God is busy punishing me. This is why I've got all these problems and hassles and challenges. And the first thing that you and I need to know, because we have difficult circumstances in our country at this stage, the Lord is with us. But when He's with us, we can prosper in a famine. We can prosper in a storm. And then it says, When His master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord gave him success, that the Lord prosper, prospered him in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. So what happened because of the fact that God was with Joseph? The, the, the second thing that happened was is that he prospered. He had success in, in that which he had to do in his daily tasks, in his work. And he not only prospered in that, it led to favor. He had favor with his master. He had favor with God and favor with people. And it led to a promotion. And when we get promotion, we get certain privileges and we get a better salary. And that is exactly what happened to Joseph. From the time he put him in charge of his household and all, all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care with Joseph in charge. He did not concern him with anything except the food that he ate. So God blessed them financially as well. And that's God's heart to prosper us even in a famine. So let's just underline that again. Genesis 39 verse 2. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. And that's God's heart for you. And that's his promise for, for, everything, for every one of us. So what happened to Joseph? He had good health. Verse 7 says, Now Joseph was well built and handsome. 
He was, he was healthy. Why? Because God prospered him. He was successful in his day job, in his work. He prospered in what he did. Verse 3 says, When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, so he was successful in what he had to do. He had good relationships. Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant, verse 4 says. And then he had wealth to show for that. Potiphar had wealth and Joseph had wealth. The blessing of the Lord was in everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. Now when we talk about prospering, that verse actually occurs 49 times in the Bible. So don't worry about it. I'm not going to read all the verses. The Hebrew word is tzalach. And it means to, uh, to, to, to prosper, to have beauty, to have happiness, to have blessing, to have well-being. But there's a lot of um, possible understanding and translations of the word that I've given you. The New Testament talks about uodo, and it means to prosper, it will go well with you, or plutuo, to be rich or to become rich. And, 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 and that's the meaning in the word. But when we look at the other verses in the Bible, it means to have success in your endeavors, uh, to find a wife, to be successful in war, to build the temple, church, uh, your business, to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Whatever you do, it means to have success in whatever you undertake to do. In Genesis 24, Abram gives and uh, asks his slave to go and look for a wife for his son. But he said to me, the Lord before whom I work, walk will send his angel with you and prosper your way. And you shall take a wife for my son and for my family and for my father's house. So he had to go and look for a wife for his, his master's son. And God prospered him and he was successful in that endeavor. Nehemiah 1.11 says, Oh Lord, I pray Please let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who desire to fear your name and let your servant prosper this day. I pray that, that, that you may grant me mercy in the sight of this man for I was the king, king's cupbearer. And he was on the verge of, of asking the king, uh, <coughs> I, 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 I need some, some leaves so that I can go to Jerusalem. I need some supplies and I need your permission and he, and he asked for success. He asked God to help him prosper in this, in, this, in this endeavor. And so we can do the same. And then a perspective on prospering that I really like is the fact that God says that no weapon that attacks you will prosper. Oh, I love this. I love Isaiah 54, 17 that says, no weapon that is formed against you will prosper prosper and every tongue that accuses you in judgment you will condemn this is the heritage of the servants of the lord and their vindication is from me declares the lord what a wonderful promise to stand on and and that's actually a promise that i have had to pray a lot of times in my life there were so many occasions that i had to pray lord I pray that no weapon that is being formed against me will prosper and that I will refute every tongue that rises against me in judgment. It's a wonderful promise to pray, but it's a prom uh, to pray and it's a wonderful promise that God gives us that he will he will make sure that no attack against us will achieve anything. And then the Bible comes with the admonition and it says if you want to prosper don't hide your sin. Um, we have to be holy because He is holy. We have to, uh, to walk in the light. John says that if we walk in the light, um, we don't have anything to be afraid of. Proverbs 28, 13 says, He who conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will find compassion. So we need to get rid of sin if we want God's blessing on our lives. So, just to summarize, it's, God heart, it's God's heart to prosper you. God wants to, wants to prosper you despite insurmountable, difficult challenges. And remember, whenever you are in a crisis, you can still prosper because God is with you. Joseph prospered in a famine, in difficult situations. And the verse occurs 49 times in the Bible. So when we talk about prospering, it's, it's about having good health. 
And if we have to be honest in this time, what is the one thing that we are concerned about? We are concerned about sick people and we want them to get healthy. We are concerned about our own health and we want to stay strong and healthy. So we need to pray and ask God, God, please prosper us so that we can be physically healthy. Obviously, it means that God will bless us financially. And um, you can be blessed as a nurse, you can be blessed as a mechanic, you can be blessed as a doctor, as a pastor. So we need to ask God, God, it's difficult financial times for this country. Lord, we would like we would like to prosper. We would like to be successful. So provide for us financially in this time. But to prosper also means that we will have good relationships. And we are living in a time where relationships are under a strain. Um, we, we don't have the freedom of movement. Uh, we can't visit people in hospital. We can't visit each other as much as we would like to. So our relationships are under a strain. And we can pray in this time, God, we ask you to prosper us so that we will have good relationships. So God wants to prosper you with good health, with good finances, and good relationships. I love 3 John 2 that says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health even as your soul prospers. Beloved friend, I pray that you are prospering in every way and that you continually enjoy good health just as your soul is prospering. That's God's heart and that's God's heart for you and for me. Let's pray together. Father, we would like to pray through John 2. And we would like to pray, Father, that we may prosper and be in good health even as our soul prospers. So, Father, we pray that you will release good health over your children. We pray, Father, for the people that are sick, that you will heal them. We pray, Father, for the people that are healthy, that you will keep them strong, that you will act activate their immune systems, and that you will bind any long-term stress response in their bodies. Father, we pray that you will command your angels to surround us and that you will protect us from the evil and the evil one. Father, we pronounce health and healing over everybody that is sick, everybody that is lis listening, Father. We, we, we call out, we pronounce the name of Jesus over their bodies. Father, and we pray, we pray that you will forgive our sins, that you will save our lives from death and the pit, that you will crown us with your goodness, and that you will renew our strength like, like that of the eagle, Father. We pray, Father, that you will provide financially for us. And we pray, Father, that we will have a new intimacy and peace and unity in our relationships. We pray, Father, that you will prosper us with good health, with good finances and good relationships. We ask this, we pray this in the name above all names, the name of Jesus. What a powerful word this morning. And I'm so excited to see just how God works in this week through that word in your life. Uh, may it have fruit, may it carry fruit in your life. May you experience that the word of God is a safe haven for you. The word of God inspires and the word of God leads. So I am so encouraged by this word this morning by Peter Now, and I'm so excited to see what fruit will come from it for my life and for your life. You now have an opportunity to thank the Lord with your offerings and thank you for everyone who's been giving to this ministry. You'll see that the zapper and the snap scan codes uh, will be on the screen as well as our account number should you want to um, give in that way. This week, there's just been a verse on my heart and I want to share it with you. It's John 16 verse 33 and it's out of the Passion Translation. And everything I've taught you is so that this peace which is in me will be in you and will give you great confidence as you rest in me. For in this unbelieving world, you will experience trouble and sorrows, but you must be courageous for I have conquered the world. Let's just pray together and receive this blessing wherever you are in this morning.
Father, we bless each and everyone watching this sermon this morning. We bless each and everyone receiving this word this morning. And we pray, Father God, that it will carry much fruit in their lives. Father, we pray that your healing rays will shine upon them, Father God, that they would experience your blessings, that they would experience your faithfulness, that they will experience your kindness in this week, Father God. Will you come, Father God, and will you come, Jesus, and will you touch every heart, speak to every soul, Father God, and thank you that you remind us of your love and your kindness each and every day. Thank you for each and every one who is open to receiving your word, Father, and we bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen.